praise the Lord. I don't know if you noticed or not, but we sing real good. I don't know if you noticed in the worship service this morning. Beautiful harmony. I was so blessed. I thought if I don't sing a little bit less, I'm going to wear out my voice before I get up there. But it was so good. Those old songs, it was just, just beautiful. I'm glad I'm here this morning. You know, I thank Yoni for giving me the opportunity to say something. And uh, for a long time I've wanted to share because I thought you didn't realize what really is going on around in the province. And uh, just to add to that, I think we're all in a good place. Amen? I'd like to see your hands this morning. Aren't we in a good place? Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm glad to have some compatriots here this morning too. Right. By way of introduction, I am a missionary. <laughs> I want to share about the ministry here in Limpopo province. My late husband, Ken Deploy, and I came down in 1978 from Zimbabwe after serving there for 13 years. And we had a 10-year session in America too. And this became our home base. You know, this church was still in Bickard Street. Pastor Schumann was the pastor, and he helped us get settled in here. I praise the Lord for them. And uh, so then at that time, we only had about 20 congregations, but our ministry began to spread out in Vendaland, Laboa, and Gazankulu, as it was known then. I was called to missions when I was only 17 years old. <laughs> And uh, that was in Kansas City, Kansas, <laughs> little church there. And uh, the pastor just said, someone here has a call to missions in Africa. Well, I didn't question it. I knew without a doubt, I knew that I knew that I knew. And all of a sudden, the, the continent started spreading out before me. And I, yo, <laughs> a little country girl. <laughs> From a small town, whoa, I said, hey, Lord, maybe you're making a mistake. I heard you. But uh, uh, what can a, a kid like myself do in Africa? You know, then we didn't know much about Africa then. Yeah, communications were small. But I did know one thing, that if you feel the call of God on your heart, you say, yes, Lord, I'm going to go. No matter what, no matter how it frightens you, it's just one of those things you say yes. I've got a little film strip this morning. It won't take long. I want to show you only, it's a small collection of photos from the early days. My, the first photo that you're going to see this morning will be my mother-in-law, Lily Duploy, that God also called to missions when she was younger in Wood Green, London. She worked as a maid in London. This was uh, a long time ago. She came out as a missionary in 1921. And she came to work in Swaziland. And there she met my father-in-law. And God, as God would have it, you know, she became a teammate in the mission field and the wife of South African-born W.A. Deploy, who had also been called to missions in 1919. Praise the Lord. Let's just show it. If you don't mind, I'll just stand here and enjoy the, so I don't have to move too much. This was my father-in-law removing some of the bangles from the children that were saved. Where's the music? <laughs> Music's the best part. <laughs> Okay, it's going to work. Praise the Lord. That was my husband, Anita, baby. And with friends. Mom. 
best friends. First, first home at Lavubze. First home in Zimbabwe. We met in Cleveland, Tennessee, and married there. My folks on a farm in Kansas. I was the baby there. My baptism at the age of six. Another Tennessee picture. Ah, my firstborn Kenny living in Atlanta now with his four children. Shangon dances. Fishing for ants to eat. Whatever Lovely. You the dancers. This was the few Sachangans at the new. This is in, in Venda. Hallelujah. Cooking for the crowd. A break with the past. Praise the Lord. The old tent truck took us lots of places. Making salt. Giving the word. Outdoor ministries. Praying for the fields. Tent evangelism. Burning the fetishes of the witch doctors that gave their heart to the Lord. Water baptism. Oh. Only the walls are standing, but people coming to be baptized. This was the Guiani Church in the beginning. They raised, they had 400 members before we started building this church. This is a church in Lulikani near Palabora. A few of the pastors. <laughs> this was taken in uh, San Antonio, I guess you recognize the spot. New grandbabies along the way. Hallelujah. So our church at Gonlanani, my son and daughter-in-law on the left. A whole family having service with us there in Namakali. <laughs> Sunday school seminars. Giving their hearts face down before God. Our Bible school in Guiani. Another Sunday school seminar, graduations. Our, our uh, officers in the church. 2002, July. And, I'll give the nations to you. and oh, when the mantle falls, you have to carry it. Just work alone. At our preschool at 
she knows. Yanni Church as it is today. And that's another one in Lulikani. We've got so many big, big churches. I'll tell you all about that just now. This is Martha Mahubeli. She passed away in 2006. I was in America at the time. But she was my husband's adopted mother. <laughs> she protected him when my, grand, when my mother-in-law had gone overseas one time. And other people there, they protected him from anything that would happen on the mission, snakes and all that sort. You know how it is on the field. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. <laughs> oh, anyway. I want to give you a couple of scriptures. Acts 1.8. If you're writing down, wrap that text. Go back to it often. I've written it out. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses. Amen. That's all of us. No one's excluded. Witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And again, in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 24, faithful is he that calls us, calls you, who also will do it. Amen. That's a promise. He calls you, he'll do it for you. Hallelujah. We have proven that God is faithful and will see us through every situation, especially in the rural areas where we have traveled in Zambia, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, and here in South Africa. Many times it's necessary to get off the beaten track and see the real Africa. I've got a few people here who can vouch for me this morning, Brother Mike and Lynette. He's been with us. <laughs> On the road, many, many times, they used to come up from the Dinwiddie Church in Germiston and uh, bring a big group with them. If they didn't have a big group, maybe they're just one or two. Sometimes it was just Mike would come up and drive and uh, be in the services with us. So I, I can vouch. He can vouch for me this morning that it's true what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. But I have the privilege of also being mom and granny throughout the province. You know, in, in Sutu, that's Koko. Amen. In Shangan, I'm Kokwani. And I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I enjoy so much being in all the churches. I'm delighted to report to you have more than 100 sister churches throughout the province. Full gospel churches of God throughout Limpopo. 100 pastors and Christian workers more than that, men and women of God, there is growth, both in numbers and spiritual maturity. In the town of Guiani, our church has 1,500 members. We've outgrown the church. There's standing room only. And we've started a new structure. Amen. That new, new building is going to seat 4,000 plus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And we will fill it too. They purchased two years ago, we purchased two tents and uh, for sp at least uh, two years ago, uh, we purchased a tent for special meetings. That seats 4,000 and we fill it. Amen? <laughs> so, so we know we're going to fill it. And we've established, actually we established that church in 1980. When we first came down from Zims, we traveled up to Guiani again and again. We found an amazing group of people there. And they promised that they'd support the pastor. So we brought Pastor Hans Mashila there in 1984. Do you realize, Brother Yanni, he's been there 25 years, and the church has grown from strength to strength. You know, their theme this year, our theme this year is divine acceleration, which means putting it into fast forward. Amen? I like that. And that's what we do. We just work 24-7 and keep at it. So after we established that, we also have an amazing church. You saw one clip of the building program. Our church in Palaboro, which is at the Lulikani Township, 
is also near the thousand membership. They have an excellent pastor. I just stop a minute and tell you about that. The pastor who built the church, Brother Mishimzi, when his son came home from Bible school, he said, okay, it's your turn. You take the church, and he speaks beautifully, amazing young man. And so the father says, I'm going into Mozambique as a full-time missionary. So missionaries today are making missionaries. Hallelujah. So they have that many. We also have several churches that are between 500 to 800 people. Several churches that uh, are smaller. Some are small, but right up to from beginnings to 300 people. So there are lots of, these are your sister churches. I just wanted you to know about it. Long ago, we called them congregations. We call these congregations Mission Fields. Huh? Then we changed that name to Mission Force. But now I just call them my, you know, <laughs> my unbeatable force. My unbeatable force. I'm so proud of all the ministers and workers there. We all need to have a part. We all need to have a part in this evangelism. We have our blessings here, but it's not right to let it just stop right here in this building. Huh? It's like you go to the shop and you buy a big tin of jam. You rush home and you get a spoon. You sit down and eat the whole tin. Hmm? Huh? No. We don't do that. We spread it on bread. And give it to the children. Amen? Amen. We spread it and we give it out. So don't keep it to yourself. Don't hold this glorious gospel for yourself. Let's share. Let's shine with God's everlasting love. It's our duty to carry the gospel to every nation. And this is why I wanted to share with you this morning. Let you know what God is doing. I love this gospel. I love to preach. I love to teach. I know that there is nothing too hard for God. And so all you do is just hand it over to him, and he does the work. So pray for a harvest of souls. And for me, every day, I need your prayers. I need your support. Become a part of this challenge. Win the lost at any cost. It's my strong desire to carry on, and one day, one day, hear my Savior and Master say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord.
lift up your eyes The harvest is here The kingdom is near You say So now I'll give a name to you oh lord that's the cry of my heart it's so sure that Oh, I was at the 